Okay, so on this one, we're going to get started on a, on a UCCX script. And first thing I want to show you and things that I consider that you should understand is how a script works and what are the many things that you can do with it. So I'd like to give you a few things to, to get a, a good start on that. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Cisco DevNet. This is the developer page from Cisco. We're going to go to collaboration, looking for contact center, and then we're going to go to contact center express and the scripting piece. Okay. Now here at the bottom, you have three excellent resources and those are the scripting and development volume one, two, and three. Now, what I like to do first is to show you, you know, what are the few things that you're going to find here. This, this one is, I will say fairly new. It's from last year. So this is, if you, if you like reading instead of watching videos, this is an excellent resource and it pretty much explains everything and we may use it. I mean, I'm not an expert on UCCX. I like it a lot, but um, we may use it from time to time to to look for things that I don't know. So that's one thing. The other thing is the UCCX script repository. And then this one, I thought I was going to find it here on DevNet. I looked for it and didn't find it. So I just did a Google search. And uh, under the design guides, I just did a control F script repository. And then I'll see a zip file. Now the zip file is going to open and then it's going to create a uh, few folders that you'll see here and this is going to show you basic basic stuff or pieces of code for for a contact center script a nice thing about this is if you want to do an ivr you can check on this and these are the ones related to premium and what i want to do first is i want to check on this guy And this is just just to show you how to use it what can you find what should you expect and this is a description of what is the script supposed to do how to use it and then hopefully you get uh, some screenshots on different things that that are configured already on that script. Okay. Now today we're gonna start with just a basic, uh, we're gonna start off from the basic script and it's just gonna be a queuing script. And then we're gonna build upon that one to complete the solution that we have, All right? So let's move on to server one. This is what we're going to use to configure everything. Now, I believe I already have the contact center, the UCCX editor. And I'm logging in with uh, UCCX admin. This would take just a few minutes to to load up. Okay, so this got just started. Now we're gonna look for uh, 
a base uh, script that we could use and then we're gonna go to this folder remember we're using 10.6 the reason why I'm using 10.6 is because I would like to create some configuration and then be able to upgrade to 11.5. <clears throat> And I'm gonna go with the basic ICD, and this is on the local computer where you install the contact center express editor. Okay, so really no much to see here. This is just a simple simple queuing template. This is accepting the call, then this is gonna play a prompt, and then it's gonna queue a call to the next available agent that we define here on the CSQ. Now we're just gonna use this one. And what I like to do is that we have our main auto attendant and I'm gonna change it to that, um, to that script. So I want to show you first what are the things that we're going to see. And I'm going to save it on the script repository. This is going to be a main AA. Okay. Now let's take a look at the script management. And then we see main AA, it was created by UCCX admin and it just happened. Now on the application, I want to show you, and I think I already showed this, this, uh, on one of the previous videos, but I want to see how it's going to work out for us. And now here in the CSQ, I'm going to change it to sales. And just leave it like that. So in the script, you see the CSQ defined here on the select resource step. And this is just a variable that was created here. It doesn't have any value, but it's configured as a parameter. Now what happens is that when you configure something as a parameter here, it's going to show up as uh, something that you can edit on the application configuration. So I just saved that. And what I want to see is if my CSQ is called sales and yes, it is. And let's see if I have people assigned to the sales department and I have agent two and sales. And let's see agent one is in sales too. And now let's make sure that they are ready to take the call. Okay, so they show up as ready. Let's see what we see here in the supervisors. And agents logged in. This is supposed to bring me the agents, and for some reason, it's not doing it. So, let's see if opening it up again. I've seen this like a, a bug. Let's see if we can get a fix here. And really, I'm not going to go too crazy about troubleshooting that or trying to fix that, but I just want to give it one more shot. And it didn't work. Oh my God, it became personal, so. I 
Let's see. It didn't work. I think I've seen this before, but I'm not gonna troubleshoot it. Okay, so we have that. We have these two guys as ready. We're not using the the supervisor, so we're not gonna troubleshoot it right now. Um, CSQs are ready, so I'm gonna attempt a call from my desk phone. Thank you for calling. Okay, so seems like that call is here. And it was answered by 2013. Okay, so let's hang up the call from here. Actually, I put it on hold. Put it on hold. I don't think I can oh. hang up from my phone. Now we're gonna attempt the call, and hopefully, if this is configured correctly, it should be from PC from PC one. Thank you for calling. And PC1 or that number 2014 is not configured to auto answer. But I'm I'm gonna answer from here from the client. Life is good. And that's all. I'm gonna hang up that call. So that was the basic queuing script, and we're gonna keep modifying it and on on, on the next videos so for now thank you for watching